Hey folks, uh, today we're doing something a bit different. I'd like to show you the first level in this game called Iblad Laputa no Kairu Machi. It's a Japanese game, it's only released in Japan. And it's on the PS1, and it's amazing. I couldn't believe that I'd never heard of this game before, because it's so much my kind of thing. It's like a cool dreamlike exploration game. On the PS1, just like LSD Dream Emulator, my favorite game ever. Uh, except this one has like a bit more of a story. Oh, and there's, there's talking, right? But I don't speak Japanese. Uh, it hasn't really impacted my enjoyment of this game. Uh, so we're just gonna like sit through the cutscenes and stuff while they talk Japanese at us. Uh, game is still very enjoyable. It's not like story heavy or anything, but... Uh, it's mostly about, you know, the atmosphere and stuff. This amazing dream world, which is all based on the works of this artist. Um, who's like a big deal in Japan. They've got like books and shit in the Studio Ghibli animation about their works. And they're just like all about this cool like dream world or whatever. So let's get started. Um, it's not a lot of options, so... New game. It's gonna be a funny cutscene here. I played the first level this morning, I don't really know what's past the first level. But it was incredible. It's just like... Oh, I can't believe this game exists. It's so sick looking. You play as this wiener. He's a little stiff. Uh, I guess he's not in a good mood or whatever. He's got his book about Laputa, kind of like that other game I did on my channel, but a bit less boring. Yeah, it incorporates a lot of this guy's paintings. It's not kind of floating disc world. Sorry if you can speak Japanese and I'm talking over this guy, but uh, I didn't want the whole video just to be me being silent and listening to something I can't understand. So this isn't the best video if you want to take in this the story of this game. This guy is like, oh man, I wish the Peter was real. It's such a cool uh, series or whatever. So here's this lady and there's like a frog and a mole with her. I like these characters a lot. So they were in the book he's reading, right? But now he's with them. So is he is he in the book now? Or is this meant to be real life still? But if this is real life, why is there talking animals? So I guess he's already in the fantasy world. And whoops. Just like in LSD, there's the can that you knock into. It makes a loud noise. And they're like, oh fuck, there's some lame kid following us. Let's get out of here in our weird rectangle spaceship. And they're gone. This guy's like, damn. I was so close to experiencing something other than my miserable life. Oh wait, they left this cool lunchbox. Gimme. He grabs it and he's like, oh fuck. My eyes. And then this giant blue turd appears. And he's like, yes. Finally, I can escape from Japan. Fuck yes. Sorry. He didn't hesitate for a second. He's like, yeah, I'm going. I don't want to be here anymore. Nice loading screen. You never see loading screens like this anymore, do you? And yeah, that just puts us straight into the first level. This is where it gets truly amazing. I just love, like, edge mazes and shit in video games, like, whenever it's like a natural environment, but it's also really artificial and disconnected from reality, but it's trying to look realistic. That's like my favorite thing in games. I think it comes from me playing like Harry Potter games when I was a little kid, like, uh, you could explore like the castle and shit, and it was always like, you know, nicely rendered. So our goal here is to get onto that train right there. Uh, but we just arrived on the other side of this hedge maze, look. 
and I can look up and down. It took me a while to figure this out. So here's some of the paintings that this place is based off of. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they're not in the best quality, but uh, you get the idea. So yeah, there's a lot like LSD in that you just move around, and because it's a PS1 game that doesn't use the analog sticks, it's a bit stiff. Uh, it does give us a map though, which is nice. So we can take a look at that. There's the inventory map. Uh, so we came from the bottom left. Uh, you can see the train tracks. We were on the right train track. We want to go onto the left one. And there's some other places for us to explore. So this is the only level I've seen so far. So I did get stuck. Um, I think probably because I couldn't speak Japanese, so I didn't know what the NPCs were telling me. Uh, but at least I won't get stuck in this video because I know what to do now. And there's these uh, default Unity <laughs> capsule colliders floating around. And if you bump into those, they take away a bit of your health, which is in the top right. I can make the health appear and disappear if I want to. Uh, so there's a tiny bit of a video game element to this. I'm not sure if it was really necessary, but it does make it a tiny bit more exciting. And in here we have... I think that's a little spaceship. Can't tell you with complete uh, certainty what that is. But look, it's gone. And it had that little uh, crescent thing next to it. Oh shit, okay. So look, it drops it off in this tree here. <laughs> That's probably telling us what I just said. It's nice to play a game where I'm allowed to skip over all the dialogue, because uh, normally I'm playing a game and I'm like, but I let it talk, I don't want people to be annoyed at me for talking over this, but I'm giving myself free rent to just talk as much as I want, because there's no point in me listening to this. Here's some more spaceships. Extremely low poly spaceships. It still looks cool though. It still has the intended effect. There's a lot of uh, ships zooming around this place. Uh, I sort of lost my bearings after that. No, oh, there's the tree. Okay. So this is the place in the bottom left that connects to the other train track, which is our goal. Except this tower thing is in the way. So this tower thing is the circle on this map on the far left there, so we need to figure out a way to get past this. Uh, there's a lot of other bits on this maze we haven't explored yet. So let's turn all the way around and make our way back. Uh, there's a strafe button as well, so I can use that if I want to do some speedrunning strats. Don't want to waste time turning around. So this game kind of forces you to take a slower pace because you can't move very fast. I'm doing a bit of a risky strat here, trying to get around. So there's a capsule right behind me, I think. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're safe now, I think. Those are the only capsules we need to worry about for now. Where to next? Oh yeah, we can pick up some health if we lose any, but I'm a goddamn pro, so I don't need it. Don't know why these are here, really. You can get a bit of a better look. I love this foliage, like the weird shaped trees. They're like perfectly like pruned and gardened, but like how would someone even garden that tree? Like how would they clip away all the branches? It wouldn't be possible, really. Unless they were in a tiny spaceship. Some more nice trees. I always freak out when I'm making a game, because uh I want the trees to look natural, right? I don't want them to just be like geometric shapes, I want them to be like lumpy like in real life, but I guess there's no reason why you can't make trees that are just shapes. What's this? This looks familiar. If we interact with that, it fucking rotates, doesn't it? Here's another painting we can enjoy. That looks like uh, I'll play a character here. 
Shame about the, the color palette limitations. I think that's what's making it so hard to read what's going on in this picture. But you get the general idea of what that is. And let me just check the map again. So we're at this uh, rectangle at the bottom right. We want to go to the house, I think. I mean the square that's uh, at the south end of the map. So let's keep going. Oh yeah, I haven't mentioned the music yet, but the music is just perfect, like exactly what this kind of thing should sound like. It's like kind of magical, but not too like noticeable. It's like it doesn't get old either. It's some really perfect dream exploration music. It's not like LSD where the music makes you want to kill yourself. Oh, I've got a bit of a river here. I think I can go in this. Splash. And uh, I think the current is going against us, so we can't really swim away. It's nice that you can go in there. That's some pretty water effects. Anyway, let's go inside this spooky building with no windows. There's a fucking loading screen for this house. Oh, look who it is! Funny mole man. I love his theme tune. Reminds me of Teletubbies a bit. The music does. And he's like, oh shit, a fucking lame kid is here. Still. <laughs> no idea what he's saying, but I'm sure it's pretty funny. Sometimes his mouth doesn't move, but sometimes it does. His lips aren't moving at all. And a second later... They do. See? The fuck. This guy can't believe it. He seems distraught about something. He's like, you're stuck in this magic dream world unless you collect the seven dream gems. Or whatever. I don't know what they're actually saying. It's probably something unimportant. It's not really necessary to enjoy the game. But I know some people need to have that overarching narrative, otherwise they'll get bored or confused or whatever. I'm just on another level, okay? I don't need any of that. Look at his funny wiggling whiskers. It's this blue thing. Uh, I know what this blue thing does. It like makes a spaceship appear or whatever. Uh, like it did at the start of the game. There he goes. He's a funny little guy, isn't he? I like him disappearing into those holes. Very entertaining. We get a boomerang as well. Nice weapon. I wonder what the Japanese word for boomerang is. Anyway, there you go, we can boomerang things so we can look up and down, boomerang in any direction we want to. This is where I got stuck because I didn't realize you could uh, look up and down. I had to look up a video. Oh, there is windows. Okay. That's pretty, isn't it? Shame the river just sort of ends abruptly, but... They were limited, it's on the PS1. The limitations are definitely part of the charm now. Uh, so let's go boomerang some shit. Uh, so stuff in the air we can boomerang now. Makes a cool noise. Uh, we can't boomerang the capsules, unfortunately. The one enemy in the game and you can't use the weapon on them. But this isn't really a weapon using kind of video game, I'm sure you can tell. So, we just gotta dodge them, as we've been doing. I think that's everything in this place. Yeah. So now we can go to where that little tower was that we rotated. So I've heard that all the puzzles in this game are like that, where you can just sort of, like, file an error or just guess your way to knowing what to do, even if you don't have a clue what's going on. 
which is handy. Here we go, we got our little crescent here. I'm gonna use the use the button. That first character says moon. I don't know that much. Moonstone. The third one is stone. I made like an incredibly half hearted attempt to learn Japanese a couple years ago. Obviously I didn't last very long, but I know like fifty kanji or something. Now we've got this, we can go through here as well. Pretty cool. These diamonds are like the, uh, the, whoops. The floating diamonds are like the, uh, train tracks that the spaceships follow. I've... This took me, like, 30 minutes, this first level, because I was just guessing around. I didn't know what was going on. So here we go, we're almost at this spaceship. We just got this one capsule to look out for. Let's go over here. Uh, see, there's the moon character again. I saw that. So I think we have to select it in our inventory here. Seems like the right place for this. Oh shit, the capsules are fucking pissed. We messed with their machine, now they're gonna fuck me up. So this is the first, like, combat encounter. You have to defeat all the capsules. And you already need to know a lot of the combos in this game, so I had to look up the instruction manual, learn like square, square, triangle, circle, circle, square is like his main finishing move. No, I'm just kidding, there's no combat in this game. What are you, crazy? I was pulling your leg. So these capsules make a bridge for us, we can get across the river now. If you fall in the river, you have to like, it like puts you all the way back to that little house with the mole in it, and you have to walk all the way back. Just fate worse than death, so luckily I didn't fall in this time. And that is like the first level. I don't know how long this game is, it's probably not that long. Uh, level 2 looked a lot more in depth, and I think I'm gonna go and do level 2 as well. I thought this video would be way longer, but I guess I'm really good at this game now. I love that this is a whole bush that's just... They grew an entire topiary into like a staircase. Which is a sort of saves making different textures and stuff because they can just keep using the trees. But yeah, very pretty. I've always enjoyed uh, topiaries in video games and in real life. I like seeing plants that have been forced to grow into unnatural, freakish, grotesque shapes. And bloody spaceship won't let us in. Luckily, we've got our little blue thing here. Uh. I can't remember what any of those characters are. They're really basic ones, those are like grade one, and I've forgotten them, but... I don't need to know what that says, I just need to know that this lets you get on the spaceship. I think. If you use it, there we go. It's blue rectangle of power. Ray, And away we go! 